Transform Church. So, again, in the spirit of Easter, we are, uh, <laughs> obviously, again, we don't do anything special for any holiday here, because we just want people that are interested in hearing the Word of God. Like, really, that's, that's what we want. And if you're not interested in hearing the Word of God, then, you know, we're not going to try to attract you to an Easter service or something. You know what I mean? Like, if the Word of God isn't good enough, we're not going to try something else. But um, as far as Jesus' resurrection is concerned, um, you know, celebrating Easter, it's not like we're against having an Easter egg hunt or something. You know, we do all that kind of stuff and, you know, uh, the Easter basket thing. And, you know, uh, they just did an uh, Easter egg hunt with Nathan this morning. And so, like, it's, 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 like, it's fine. It's just something fun to do. But as far as, like, the doctrinal aspect of Easter, people celebrate Easter, though, as something of, like a religious holiday, obviously, right? They celebrate it as something that, um, for a few reasons. One would be, people will say that um, when Jesus rose, you know, that death was defeated. They'll say that. They'll say that, uh, if you've ever heard someone say, um, you know, we just have to believe on everything that Jesus provided us through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Like, people will say things like that as well. The resurrection is usually added in as something that people believe provided something to us, uh, or people will say, you know, that we have, we're cleansed of sin through his death and given life through his resurrection. Things like that, where, where like the, the resurrection is added in as the day that Jesus defeated death for himself, or the day that he defeated death for us. Um, this is a big thing with praise and worship songs that we've had to edit, you know, uh, so thoroughly, uh, a lot of them. And uh, one of the lines that you'll commonly hear referring to the resurrection of Jesus is uh, the song will go something like talking about Jesus' death uh, and whatever, and it was finished. They'll even say, but then at the same time, they'll say, uh, oh, and the stone was rolled away and there was victory, or and he rose victorious, right? Uh, but But that's not true. I mean, it's true that when he rose, he already was victorious, but it's not true that when he rose, he was rising um, as a victory. The victory was completely at the cross, and I know that we know this here, I'm sure, but um, the victory was totally, Jesus died victorious, okay? And that's why, if you'll notice, he didn't say it is finished when he rose. He said it is finished when he died. His death, his atonement, is what provided us with this new covenant we have. His resurrection didn't provide anything to you at all. His resurrection did no um, atoning. His resurrection did no providing in and of itself. It was his death that did that. Um, when Jesus rose from the grave, um, we'll, we'll, we'll go into that in a second, actually, but in Jesus' death, the Bible says that a new covenant is not in effect until the death of the testator. And so it's his death that provided this new covenant. That's what provided the atonement, and that's what actually provided us the life that we have. Um, let me just bring you real quick to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2 and verse 15. Actually, verse 14. Colossians 2, 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. It's talking about the law. Yeah, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So the context here is the cross. And then verse 15, it says, having spoiled principalities and powers, spoiled meaning like uh, took away their, 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 their goods, essentially. Uh, it says, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And it, you'd have to refer obviously to the verse previous to know what it is, and he was just referring to the cross. So when he says, triumphing over them in it, he's saying triumphing over the principalities and powers um, in the cross. So it's the cross that he names here as the triumph. The triumph was when Jesus died, right, first and foremost. Um, Jesus' death is the full provision for every single believer, again, and it's also the reason why we have the new covenant that we have today. The resurrection, when Jesus rose, there was no more victory being gotten by his resurrection. In fact, the resurrection is Jesus enjoying the reward of his finished work that was at the cross. 
uh, when he died is when the work was finished. But when Jesus rose, is actually him just entering into the life that he now deserves because he had paid for sin. You have to understand, when Jesus went to the cross, obviously he became our sin. And as we've been saying even recently with the Unsealed series, he became our sin. And he, he sort of let go of the worthiness that he had previous. And so when he became sin, he lost everything. The Father forsook him completely. So in order for him to get back to a place of glory and get back to a place of everlasting life, he has to, for lack of a better term, justify himself out of that sin. Remember, he was in sin, literally in sin, took our sin in his own body on the tree. It's not just like metaphorical. He, Jesus didn't just become your substitute as if a righteous man just simply died for a sinful person. No, no, he became your sin, okay? True, he was righteous by his own works, but he became your sin. So he became your unworthiness, which is, he, that's why he lost everything. And so how did, how did Jesus get from being in sin and forsaken by God, no life, no glory from the Father, no aid from the Father whatsoever, to now in a resurrection where he's, in full glory, in full manifestation of the life of God. Well, as we know here, you have to just, the Bible says those whom he justified, these he also glorified, right? That's in Romans chapter 8. So if Jesus is in our unjustness at the cross, the only way for him to enter back into the glory of God is to justify himself out of it, right? The only people that God can glorify, even, even Christ in his resurrection, are those who are just, Right? So if Christ is in sin, he can't be glorified. God couldn't have, set, have kind of cut it off and said, oh, geez, you know what? You became sin, but even though you became sin, I'm going to still glorify you. He couldn't have done that. So Jesus had to, what, he had, what did he have to do? He bore our sin. He had to die. And even though, this is where this, you have to kind of follow me here. Even though he had become our sin, he was, he was both things. He was sin and he was a spotless lamb at the same time spotless because he had never no sin of his own and in sin because he had taken our sin so he's both the the the, the person you could say that's in sin he's bearing sin and he's the spotless lamb at the same time okay because he has no sin of his own he's never sinned he has known no sin of his own he'd never done anything wrong right so righteous according to his works therefore a spotless lamb yet completely in sin and unworthiness because he's bearing our sin so as Christ is bearing our sin, when he dies, he dies, and because he has no sin of his own, because he's a spotless lamb, he, he's, he's, he's simultaneously a person bearing sin for us and the atonement for that sin. So when he dies, he dies, and as a spotless lamb, he therefore has made atonement and justification for the sin he's carrying, which is why the Father could cleanse him out of that sin, because he's both. He's, but the same way that, uh, this is not going to make sense to a lot of people, but the same way that the high priest, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, you can check me up on this. The Bible said that the high priest in the Old Testament would go in making an atonement for his sin and the sins of the people, the sin that he was carrying and for the sins of the people, and it says this Christ did once. Did what? Made an atonement for the sins he's carrying and the sins of the people. And this is actually what Christ did. Again, if you know what I'm talking about there, then then good, you understood that. If you don't, I'm not going to explain it because it, it's too deep right now. So, so, but just so getting back on track, how did Christ get from being in sin to being in glory? He cannot be glorified. Christ could not have ascended to the Father and been glorified and been given the life of God while he's still carrying our sin. What did we say uh, even on, on Wednesday recently? He was carrying our merit. So God has to give Christ everything that sin deserves, our sin deserves, while he's on the cross which is why God was able to slay his son despite the fact that his son had never done anything wrong. He wasn't just a stand-in for your sin. He became your sin. So God was actually crucifying your sin in Christ. And so how did Christ get from being in sin to being in glory? Well, who can God glorify? Those whom he's justified, right? Only the just can God, glory, can God glorify. And what happens if you sin? If you're in sin, what happens? You fall short of the glory of God, right? No glory for those who have sinned, but there's only glory for those whom God has justified. So Jesus has to justify himself out of our sin first, and then he can enter the glory of God in his resurrection. So the resurrection is just Jesus getting, winning back 
and not winning back, but receiving back the glory that he deserves now because of the justification he made for our sin at the cross. Does that make sense to everybody? I know that it might get a little detailed and a little bit deep, you know, in, 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 in certain ways, so I'm trying not to go too, too much into this, but that's how that works. Jesus' resurrection didn't provide anything to you. Jesus' resurrection is just him entering all the glory that his sacrifice deserved him, that, that merited him. That, 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 that's what the resurrection actually is. Okay? The resurrection didn't provide anything. The resurrection is the provision itself. Christ was, so one more time before we read this. Christ was in sin. He had to make justification for our sin. And once Christ has made justification for our sin, what can happen now? Through that suffering, because it makes justification for our sin, he can enter into that perfection again. He can enter into that glory again. Two verses I want to read you. Hebrews chapter 2. And verse 10. Hebrews 2, verse 10. Just to show you, when it says perfect in, in, in the book of Hebrews, it's talking about the glory of God. Okay? That, that's what it's referring to. Uh, being in complete inheritance. Okay? So it says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, this is speaking about Jesus, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Perfect through sufferings. How did Jesus go from complete lack to complete perfection in the glory of God? Through sufferings. What does that mean? He had to justify himself out of our sin in order to be made perfect. That's why it says that Christ went from being in sin in full lack. What did he have to do? He had to suffer first for that sin. And as a spotless lamb, made atonement for the sin he's carrying. And once Christ suffers and makes atonement for the sin he's carrying, he can leave that sin behind. Just like you, right? You, through Christ's atonement as well, were, were cleansed of your sin so you could leave sin behind and receive the glory of God now, right? Christ did the same thing for himself. The same operation worked for him as well. When Christ is in sin, he has to suffer first so that he can make justification and atonement for the sin he's carrying. Once he's suffered, once he has died, his death now des um, has merited him the ability to be cleansed of that sin, and through his sufferings, Christ merited the ability to be cleansed of his sin, which was ours, and enter into that perfection and that glory. That's why it says made perfect through sufferings. Perfect here is referring to the resurrection. As you can see, you could say he was resurrected. He was given life through his sufferings. The resurrection is just the spoils and the goods that his suffering had deserved him, had merited him. Okay? Does that all make sense? Let me show you one more verse, just for the sake of time here. And we'll just end here. Romans 4.25. This is a, a, a mistranslated verse and a misquoted verse. And this verse is what people use sometimes to, to think that his resurrection was providing something to us. No, his resurrection is the provision itself. His resurrection is the example of what you get when you get justified through Christ's sufferings. That's the perfection that you get, anyone, himself or us. It's the perfection that you get when you're justified through his sufferings. Okay. So in, in Romans chapter 4, verse 25, who was delivered up, that's talking about the cross, for our offenses. So that means Jesus was, God had to forsake his son and deliver him up to be slain because of our offenses, right? Uh, uh, for our offenses, Jesus was delivered up this, it, and raised again for our justification. Here it, it reads, right, like when Jesus rose, he rose to provide us justification, right? Like that, that, that's the... Um, the, the purpose for which he rose was to provide us justification. But actually, if you read this in a better translation, let's read it in the Young's Literal translation. And Young's Literal is not the best here, but you'll see it says, and was raised up because of our being declared righteous. The being declared righteous thing is a little bit weird, so let's just, th that aside, that word is better ju justified, justification. But it says here, he was raised up because of our justification. He was raised because, not for our justification. Jesus, so let's just wrap this up. Jesus was not raised to provide us justification. He was raised because he had already made us, because of our justification. Does this make sense, more sense now? He was raised because he had made justification for our sin. Remember, this is what I'm trying to tell you. 
When he was in sin, he could not be glorified. The only way for him to be made perfect was through sufferings. He had to suffer and pay for the sin he's carrying to justify himself out of our sin so that God could glorify him. So his resurrection was not to provide us justification. His resurrection is actually because he had made justification for us. He had to make justification for the sins he was carrying. Otherwise, if he hadn't made justification for it, he would still be dead in sin today. But he did. With his death, he made justification for our sin, which cleansed him out of our sin and allowed him now, because he had justified himself out of our sin, to be glorified. And that's actually how it works. He was raised, he was raised up because he had made justification. Not that the resurrection was what was providing us justification. The cross provided us and himself justification from sin. That's what the cross was. And because he had made justification for us sin at the cross, that's why, because God can glorify the just, right? God can glorify only the just. Those whom he's justified, these he also glorified. And only because Christ had made a, a sacrifice good enough to justify himself and all who would receive him out of our sin, that's why God could glorify him. Um, this really is not a complicated topic, but it's just not really a topic you hear very often. Um, and it, it, it would do better probably with a lot of background. But if you have questions about this, we could talk about it later. But um, it, it may just even be better just to listen to this again because it really, it makes perfect sense. It's just something that you don't hear all the time. So it's, it's definitely something that uh, with some meditation kind of makes more sense. But, uh, but, th but that is the point. The resurrection doesn't provide anything to us. And therefore on Easter, People celebrate the resurrection for that purpose. They celebrate it because, oh, it, Jesus you know, was victorious. Obviously, we saw from Colossians. No, the cross was the victory. And, and the resurrection is just him receiving the spoil, what his sacrifice deserves. And as we saw even with these verses, the resurrection didn't provide us anything, didn't provide us justification. The cross, it was finished at the cross. But it was only because Christ justified himself and us at the cross. Again, that, that doesn't go over well with a lot of people. Christ justified himself and us. But that's correct terminology, though. Okay, Hebrews chapter 5 explains this. You can read it for yourself. Because Christ justified himself and us from our sin at the cross, him, through his sufferings, was able to be justified and then glorified. Without his sacrifice, he couldn't have ever gotten out of our sin. Okay, again, it may be a little, sound a little weird to, to many of us, but that's actually how it works. He was made perfect through his own sufferings, and all of you who go through his sufferings and are justified through that same sacrifice that he was justified through, that's why we also are glorified, just like Jesus was in his resurrection, because we've got the same justification through the same sacrifice. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reformed Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this unpopular message to the world. If you'd like to support Reformed Church, you can do so at reforminus.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reforminus.com.